Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 109 year old classic sailing yacht, Tally Ho. Now last week we pulled the old bow assembly out of the boat and this week we're going to be working towards building the new bow assembly which means starting off by taking patterns from the lofting floor and then using those patterns to cut out the new pieces from the large purple heart timbers I've got in the yard. So we appear to have some kind of problem with the ship saw. Uh, it's just a small issue at the moment, but I'm worried it could get into something bigger. Now it's just one of the rotating gears that links into the uh, main sort of pivoting section on the saw. And when you change direction with that tilt, uh, you can see that the whole shaft of the gear on it is sort of moving slightly in the body of the saw. It also takes a minute to engage, so I need to take that apart, I think, and see what's actually going on in there. So Chaka wants a stand for this mirror and uh, it's Sunday evening so I'm going to whip one up. Alright, well it's definitely bedtime, but I uh, managed to finish the uh, mirror off the checker tonight, which is good. Quite fun to do little projects like that, uh, which aren't too involved, and I was really pleased that I managed to do that stand without using any glue or nails. Most of the frame was oak from a, a part of an old bed, uh, but I didn't have enough to do the feet, so I had to use black locust for that. Which is a bit of a shame because the colours don't really go together so well, but hopefully when it weathers a bit, they'll look better together.
I'm just trying to fare this line on the inside of the forefoot. Bring it in where it needs to be. Cool. Just a hair. Is it going all right? Uh, yeah, working out, figuring out this compass plane. This is an amazing tool here. Yeah, they're cool, aren't they? Yeah, I'm used to a plane being unwavering, but this thing can change the contour. <laughs> Very cool. So we've got all the bow assembly templates finished now. Uh, so they've all been uh, shaped to match the lines on the floor. All the scarfs and the nibs uh, fit each other pretty well. And all the water lines and station lines have been transferred onto the templates. I've also worked out uh, what bolts we're going to need, what lengths and what sizes. And actually that's what the post-it notes are. Uh, they reflect some of the floor bolts and the bow assembly bolts and the keel bolts. So I need to order in the stock to make those bolts as soon as possible. Jack is outside uh, starting to flatten uh, some of the reference faces on the Purple Heart Timbers. The next thing that I have to do is uh, take these pieces outside and start laying them onto the big timbers that we've got out there uh, to make sure that they're going to fit on the right ones and work out which way around they need to go and so on. Railroad bill, open road bill. He never worked time, he never worked. I'm gonna ride, ride. So when I first came into this workshop, uh, quite a while ago now, I did a huge amount of tidying and organising and cleaning. 
And if you haven't seen uh, the video I made uh, of that process, I recommend you watch it because it was actually one of the first videos I ever made and it's quite interesting to see how the style has changed but also how this workshop has changed. Anyway, there was one part of the workshop which I never quite tackled and that is the back wall and bench which is just full of mixed up fastenings and piles of rubbish and all sorts of stuff. So we're going to tackle that because uh, we've got a day where we're waiting for some tools and stuff. Oh, and by we, I kind of mean Jack and Joe. Sorry guys. This will make you nuts. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing that now? Just about all day. <laughs> Cracking bad jokes. <laughs> we, took, uh, we took a lunch break. <laughs> Is the end in sight? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this shit was everywhere, now it's just on the uh, tables. So. <laughs> so we'd be going seven hours. <laughs> hey, I want to play ping pong, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Sort it uh, out. Uh, we'll hurry up, we'll hurry up. All right, so now we've roughed out uh, most of the pieces for the bow assembly, and now I'm just starting to take them down to their lines using planes so that they match the templates exactly. And on the flat surfaces, that's fine. You just use a standard power plane and a plane. But on the curved surfaces, and especially on these uh, concave surfaces, you need some more specialized tools to do the job properly. So here I'm lucky enough to have three different types of compass plane and uh, actually two of these were very kindly donated to the project uh, by followers from my wish list. Thank you very much for that. If you're not familiar with a compass plane, uh, it's basically like a regular plane but it's designed to be able to play in the inside and sometimes the outside of a curved piece. This is a slightly more traditional style of compass plane. It's a Stanley number 20 and it's got a fairly standard uh, plane blade arrangement in there and you can adjust the curvature of the sole by using this big sort of set screw thing here and that can go concave or convex. Now this beast is Makita and it's a really powerful plane um, it's really useful for hogging out the bulk of the timber you can take a lot of material off really quickly with this because it's very powerful and it's got a quite a wide blade uh, so I usually use this first of all, but it does have limitations because you can't really adjust the shape of the sole very much. You have a little bit of adjustment here, but that's about it. So not that versatile, but really useful for sort of freehand hogging out uh, a lot of material at once. And I normally start with this plane uh, when I'm working down to a line on a piece like this. Now this one in the middle, it's made by Viratex and it's a power plane but it's got more in common really with this Stanley. Uh, the sole is adjustable, uh, the front and the back of the sole in both ways so you can plane concave or convex curves with this. So this is what I use between the Makita and the Stanley and probably spend the most time using this to be honest because after hogging away most of the material I will use this to get right down to the line pretty much uh, and sometimes I won't even use the Stanley at all I might use it just to take off the last half a mil or take off the planar marks if it's a piece that needs to look good. So yeah, these three tools uh, have similarities but they're all really useful in their own right and having all three of them makes this job uh, a lot quicker and easier than trying to do the whole job with any one of them. Are you ready to kill yourself yet over this job? Oh no, I, I'm having a good time. It's um, you know, it's quite relaxing, <laughs> Sat satisfying my uh, OCD, you know, <laughs> therapeutic. Oh, bit highly therapeutic. <laughs> Joe and I are starting a, a garage organizing business. So uh, <laughs> find us online at 
Jack and Joe's Garage Organizers <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got a garage full of nuts and bolts that don't match. <laughs> So this massive piece of timber behind me uh, is actually bigger than it needs to be. It's 15 by 15 uh, and I ordered it quite a while ago, even before I started making new frames at all. And at that point I, was, I had a different plan for the construction of the bow assembly. I've now improved that plan uh, and I don't need a piece as big as this anymore so we're actually going to mill this down but it's actually not a waste at all because the offcut will be a really substantial piece of timber that I'll definitely use elsewhere in the rebuild. So we've had a little bit of a frustrating week in terms of tools. There's been a couple of things. This Fez tool planer, the front bottom plate was uh, bent. Unfortunately, when I got it out, I tried to bend it back and I broke off the part that holds it into the body. And so I had to order a new base plate for that, which just got here. But for a while, we've been unable to use this tool. And although I've got other power planes, uh, this is really the only tool that I like to use when uh, power planing the end grain of the Purple Heart. It really is superior for that because it's got this spiral cutting blade. It doesn't cut in a straight line, it cuts in a, in a sort of slicing, shearing action. And what that means is it's just far more effective for cutting really hard timber and end grain. And then the other thing was uh, I had a problem with my chainsaw. Now it wasn't a big problem but it did need a part replacing and running it without that part uh, would have meant a, a real risk of uh, irreversibly damaging the saw. So of course Noah had that part in stock around here uh, so we would have had to wait for a whole week. In fact, we are actually still waiting for that part. Of course, I rely on the chainsaw uh, to run in the jig to cut out the uh, big pieces of the bow assembly. So without those two tools, uh, we would have been pretty much stuck uh, without being able to do any work on the bow assembly for a week. Now, especially when there's two guys here helping out, uh, that's a huge loss of time. So I actually just bought a new chainsaw and I would normally uh, have searched for a good second hand one but it's really just a case of time. Even searching for a good second hand saw could take you know two three days and we really need to be making progress on the bow assembly every day uh, if I'm going to have it in the boat and ready for the uh, bow framing party and also if we're going to make enough progress to make these videos interesting. So I bought a new saw and what that means is that eventually when the other saw comes back I'll just have a backup. The new one is quite a bit more powerful than the old one which is good because I think the old one really was struggling with some of the uh, long cuts we were doing in the Purple Heart. It's been really interesting running a project like this as it's gained more momentum and more and more people have got involved and there's more materials and logistics involved. It's really good because things do move quicker but there's this momentum and you can't let it stop. So the other thing that I've noticed happen is just the costs going up and up and up uh, as more people are involved, as more tools are needed and they get worn out fast. They're only repairing more often, you need more spares. But I'm certainly not complaining, uh, managing to keep more or less on top of it thanks to you guys. And I'm going to install this new part back on the Fez tool planer and uh, the chainsaw is running outside so we should be good to go to make some more progress on the bow assembly.
So bit by bit we are getting through the bow assembly timbers. Um, it's taking a little bit longer to get them finished than the stern timbers because they're all more complicated shapes. But this is going to be the forefoot. The stem knee is nearly done. Jack just glued a little piece onto that today uh, which makes that piece wider and therefore able to stretch over a longer distance. That piece he glued on is uh, just gap filling. It has no structural purpose. Um, the grain of the knee extends to the ends of its sort of limbs and that's the part of the timber which will actually have the strength in it. The stem itself is cut out and uh, I've just started planing that and the mast step as well is cut out. I've already got the bronze rod for the um, fastenings which is a good thing. The bow frame raising is partially organized so that's a bit of a deadline. Um, so just hoping that nothing goes wrong with getting this bow assembly into the boat. So it was really windy yesterday and unfortunately my tripod and camera got blown over and this happened. Now I think it's just the filter, not the lens, which is very good news because this is my nicest lens. Um, but now the difficulty is getting the filter off without breaking the rest of the lens. Well, it's off and the lens seems okay. This was a really nice filter, but um, this is a really nice lens and this filter actually saved the lens uh, by making the ultimate sacrifice, so thank you. <laughs> So we took a trip into Seattle the other day uh, to pick up a few things and while I was there I bought all this bronze to make the bolts for the bow assembly. Now this is all 5 8 and 3 quarter inch round bar. Um, there's over a thousand dollars worth of silicon bronze right here and that's from the wholesaler but it should be more than enough to do all the bow assembly bolts uh, and some of the floor bolts as well. All right, well, that's it for now. So thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. It makes a huge difference and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos. So I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.